everyone, it's been a while since I uh, created a YouTube um, tutorial for Fusion 360 and I was in a discussion a number of months ago now with uh, a couple of people in the Fusion 360 community and we were discussing how to template parametric cabinets for kitchens or any kind of car carcass work for cabinets. Um, Rob Lockwood at the time created a video describing um, how to uh, create such a thing with derived parameters and I'd, as part of that discussion I'd uh, had some other ideas and some other things kind of brewing in the back of my mind prior to this discussion so I thought I'd ex kind of expand on this video uh, and share some some thoughts for how you could um, duplicate um, the, the cabinets quickly and easily. So I've got this uh, top level um, design file and I've basically drawn out the layout of my cabinets. So I've got three cabinets here in plan view and these lines represent the, the different heights. Now I've, I'm not being realistic in my layout here, I'm just trying to create some variation. So um, I want to be able to add a template here. So I've got a, a full parametric template carcass. Um, again, it's pretty basic. You could um, expand on this quite significantly. So it, doesn't really matter where I place it, um, but this is a, a free move, uh, as it were. So um, I'm, I'm happy with the orientation here, um, and I want the doors on the front of these two, and then I'll the third one I'll rotate around. But for now, I'll just get that placed in here, and I need to. I don't want to modify this template, so I'm going to say use save as and replace, um, and I'm going to create a new folder in here. Uh, and save it into here. We'll call it um, cabinet one. Now, there's a bunch of things that I might want to do to this cabinet, um, which will be common across all of the cabinets that I use in this layout. So I should get all that done right at the bat. So if I open that, this up, um, and for any given project, the, my material thicknesses might vary, or there could, other, there could be other variations for style reasons, or what have you. So, if I just drag my um, end of part marker to the beginning here, um, I can then go and insert a derive, and I can grab this global parameters um, template. Where now I could copy this uh, and create one per project, and then modify the value, so I'm not always referring back to the same one. Um, or I could have multiple versions of these and derive in um, several different um, designs and derive the parameters through. Now, in that global do in this design file here, I've got the parameters all marked as favorites, so I can turn that on and bring those through. Now, when I have a look in my parameters dialog, um, I can see that they've all been derived. Now, I want to make I've got the equivalent um, versions versions of them up here, and I want to make um, these which are the parameters that drive my model in this design and I'm just going to make them all equal to one another so yeah you'd only want to do that once right per project <clears throat> so now um, all of the parameters the key parameters in this particular design are linked back to my global parameters design um, and I can nudge that back across. So I've got, um, if I have a look at this underlying sketch here, <clears throat> I could choose to drive the size of it for with a, um, a dimension or a parameter, but I'm actually gonna delete that for this example because I want to have my sketch in my kitchen cabinets design um, drive that. So I'll finish that sketch. And so we can see now that if I grab that underlying sketch and pull it around, my cabinet changes size. Um, and if I grab this one and pull it up, it will change height. So I'm pretty happy with all of that. Um, so if I save this design now and close it off, come back to here and update, I can now copy and paste and we'll just nudge it over to the side here and use save as and replace again. And this time we're going to be cabinet two. And we'll do the same thing again. 
for cabinet three. Copy, paste. Now this time, I'm gonna rotate it around. Now, this is what's kind of cool about this process because rotating that sketch within this design um, presents a whole bunch of different complications for, especially for sketch constraints where you've got horizontal and vertical involved and they end up flipping. So this um, allows us to rotate within the context of the assembly and you'll see the benefit of that shortly. So now if I hover over this referenced cabinet, oh, hang on, I need to do um, save as and replace. And we'll call this cabinet three. Now I can edit in place this cabinet and roll back to this sketch, edit this sketch, and I'm going to turn on my construction geometry here and go to create, project, and project through the sketch from the top level assembly here, from my kitchen cabinets layout. Now I can use the collinear constraint to massage this cabinet into place. Finish this particular sketch and we'll come forwards and then set up the height and we'll repeat the same process. So construction, P for project and we'll project that through. Turn that off and then go collinear from here to here. Finish the sketch and go back to the end of the timeline. And then we can, once that's done, we can click on this green arrow here and then go off and edit the next one. So we'll repeat the same process. With that cabinet in place, we'll finish that edit in place and then we'll do the same thing for the last one here. And you'll notice that each time I edit these, it's marking it as um, me um, having um, write edits or write permissions over the file. So um, now this is rotated 90 degrees. So we're editing this in the context of the assembly. Um, and you'll see that it's creating these assembly contexts. And that's kind of the power of what we're doing here, which is um, quite kind of unique to this workflow for Fusion 360. So again, we'll project these through. Oop, don't want to do that. Cancel. Um, and then collinear, pull these into place. Finish this sketch uh, and we'll set the height of this one as well. But um, this time we're going to these heights. It's going to be the same as this height over here. It's going to project a point, which is fine. And then we'll just have to use a coincident constraint to set that up. Finish the sketch, finish the edit in place. And there we go. So now if we want to edit the, the layout in any way, we can um, maybe increase this to 750. Finish the sketch. Edit context one. And everything will update. And away we go. Now we can go back to this global parameters here, open this up and change some of the thicknesses. So we could come in here and say, right, well, I would like my um, side thickness to be 18 mils, not 12 mils. Okay, we'll save this. Come back to here, we can see that there's a whole bunch of updates that need to be done. And we'll just zoom in and keep an eye on this. And what will happen is the sides will update and get thicker on all of the cabinets at the same time. There we go. Now when we save the file, it's going to want to save all of these files and we'll see it as each one saves the reserved flag clear for me. So one of my coworkers will be the, then be able to um, pick up that file and work on it themselves. All right, so yeah, hopefully um, that's kind of inspired some new um, and possibly useful workflows for you um, on your day to day. If you've got any questions, fire away in the questions below and thanks for tuning in. Bye.